Welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Shutter Speed. I'm David Molnar, your photography mentor. In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about how to freeze action like sports and crazy running toddlers with shutter speed. Freezing action with shutter speed. So whether you're shooting sports or whether you're shooting your kids running around, you want to freeze that action. So how do you do that? Well, if you remember from one of our previous lessons, what you need to do simply is have your shutter speed be really fast or very quick, okay? That would mean a very, very small fraction, but that's actually a large number, like one thousandth of a second or two thousandth of a second, possibly even four thousandth or eight thousandth of a second if your camera and lens can handle it. So let's go ahead and take a look at some example photos that some of my Rockstar students have taken where they have frozen motion. In this first image, Donna Wilkins has absolutely frozen the motion of what I would suspect is her daughter uh, flinging this water with her hair. You can see the crisp water droplets because she is shot at one 1250th of a second. So it's a fast shutter speed. It's not the fastest, but it's pretty fast. And you can see that that motion, that those water droplets are crisp. In this next image, you can see that Jeanette Hummel has frozen the action of this eagle diving for what I would suspect is some sort of dinner or at least some amazing lunch. She also actually shot at 1 1250th of a second. So that's pretty, pretty fast. And in this final image, Brenda Butler has shot at 1 2000th of a second, has absolutely captured and frozen the motion of that surfer in the middle of that wave that's crashing on him. She's captured all of that water and that motion is completely frozen. All right, so I thought it would be really fun to practice this in real time. So I'm gonna take you to my backyard and I'm going to attempt to photograph my crazy toddlers running around, sliding on slides, swinging on swing sets, and try to see if I can freeze the motion so we can get those crisp, you know, action shots. Hey folks, David Molnar, your photography mentor. In this tutorial, uh, we're in my backyard with my kids. It's gonna be crazy, just warning you ahead of time. I'm going to attempt to use shutter speed to freeze their crazy motion and commotion that's going on in the background. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot in shutter priority mode, okay? Shutter priority is the mode where you set the shutter speed, <laughs> you set the shutter speed, okay? Uh, which means the duration of time that you're actually taking the picture and the camera is gonna automatically set everything else for you. So it, the camera will automatically set the ISO, which is the light sensitivity, and the aperture, which is the size of the hole. And this is wonderful because you can choose, hey, you can say, hey, I want to freeze the motion. So all you have to do is set your shutter speed to a fast shutter speed, all right? And then the camera is going to automatically calculate everything else. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to freeze the motion of my boys. We've got Christian up here on the slide. He's four. And we've got Judah down here. He's five. And then Rosie needs a little extra push. I'm going to, I'm going to give her a push real quick. All right. Ready? Whee! Is that fun, Ro? Yeah. High five. Nope. High five. Yeah. You're so cute. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, try to freeze the motion of the boys on the slide. And I'm going to set my camera. I'm shooting with a Rebel uh, T6. I'm going to set it to TV or shutter priority mode. On the Canon, at TV stands for time value, but it is the shutter priority mode. On a Nikon and a Sony, you just set it to S, and that stands for shutter priority. That's the mode where as long as you have your ISO set to auto, you want ISO to be auto, then um, everything else is going to work perfectly. You set the shutter speed. I'm, lo I'm losing some kids here. Uh, and you set the shutter speed and then the camera's gonna automatically set the aperture and the ISO for you. So, all right, let me see if I can round up my boys. Boys! Where'd they go?
All right, folks, I wanted to take a look at the photos that we just shot in my backyard of my crazy kids running and sliding all around. <clears throat> so first things first, I'm uh, looking at these photos in Lightroom, and when you press the letter I on your keyboard, some info um, pops up in the top left-hand corner. If you press I one more time, it actually shows you your camera settings. So this is the title of the image, Molnar Kids Sliding, and this is the length of time, or the shutter speed, 1 30th of a second. This is what I want you to pay attention to, the duration of time right here, and this is like showing the f-stop, the ISO, and the lens focal length. So don't pay attention to anything else except for this first um, fraction right here where it's talking about the amount of time. So we're at a 30th of a second, and this is a long duration of time. This is um, kind of in the beginning when I was uh, photographing Judah in his Batman shirt, and you can see this image is really blurry. There's lots of motion blur. That's because we're shooting um, slower than you can hold a camera still as a human being. Uh, we're shooting at a 30th of a second. So I knew we'd get motion blur here. Um, I was intentionally trying to do that. Now this next image you can see has gone to a hundredth of a second. So that's a lot faster than a 30th. Remember, the higher this number on this side of the fraction, um, the faster you're shooting the picture, the faster um, you know your shutter speed is. It's just like speed limits, right? The higher the number, the faster you're going, or like a speeding car. So a hundredth of a second has frozen the motion more than when we're at 30th of a second, right? It's more crisp, but if you zoom into this image, you can still see it's definitely not crisp. There's definitely motion blur. I'm gonna zoom back out, but on this next image, you've got Judah perfectly crisp because we're at one 1,000 uh, 2 50th of a second. So this is a very, very fast shutter speed. And this is what we needed to be at in order to freeze that motion and get a crisp shot of Judah going on the slide. Let's take a look at some other images. This image right here is at a 60th of a second. So this is not fast enough to freeze that motion. Clearly you can see um, that they, uh, this is Christian here holding a little toy snake. Um, they're clearly blurry. This is a 60th of a second. You're seeing all that motion. So a lot of times you guys think you're not in focus or something, but this uh, is simply a result of not shooting at a fast enough shutter speed. This photo right here kind of froze the motion. Uh, not kind of, it did freeze the motion. We're at a thousandth of a second. Okay, that is freezing the motion there. And this is uh, pretty darn crisp. And, um, and then now we've got Judah and Christian. This is very crisp, one thousandth of a second. So now we've got Judah and Christian here on the slide. Uh, they're frozen. Um, this is a great, great crisp shot of them. This is one 1,250th of a second, so it's a very fast shutter speed. This next image, we've got Christian here, and he's frozen as the motion of him is frozen as well. You can see the background is crisp. It's, it might be a little bit blurry because we're at a shallower depth of field, but the motion is actually frozen. Let's take a look at some images where the motion is not. We're at a 50th of a second, so we are too slow right here. Um, this next image, we're at an 80th of a second, so it might be a little bit more crisp than this image, but um, still not frozen. Um, the motion is not frozen. And then this is actually a really cool image. So this is an 80th of a second. And what happened here, let's look at this image. This is the same thing. This is an 80th of a second, and Christian is blurry here. In this next image, you actually see Judah, and he's crisp, which is pretty awesome, but the background is blurry. And that's because I was actually perfectly panning or moving my camera along with his action and uh, focusing right on his eyes so that you can see actually his eyes are pretty darn crisp um, and you know even kind of his hair and everything but the background and uh, is showing movement so he's moving but he's crisp the background is just blurry so that's a cool effect that you can do if you can time it right at a slower shutter speed because otherwise you know you need to shoot at like a thousandth or two fifth one thousand two 150th of a second to freeze that motion. Uh, here's a shot of Rosie. She was just up at the top of the slide, couldn't resist. Um, and then here is Judah, um, like same thing, literally the same shutter speed as this one, right? This is probably like two times in a row. I was able to pan with him perfectly here at an 80th of a second, okay, which is not, it's a pretty slow shutter speed. You can handhold an 80th of a second, but when someone's moving, it's hard to freeze their motion. As you can see, this one, I totally botched it. This is completely uncrisp. I just was panning perfectly with him there. And then uh, we have Rosie on the top of the slide again. Um, and then this is a 800th of a second, so it's not quite as fast as a thousandth, but we definitely have that motion frozen. They're in the middle of going down pretty fast in the slide, so got that motion frozen. 
Here's Rosie. Unfortunately, this image is a little bit dark and the image is not clear, not crisp. I, I would say completely unusable. This is an 80th of a second. Um, but uh, you have this shot right here um, is uh, 80th of a second too. This one's actually unusable. Let's see, I think this next image actually is usable. Yep, this is very similar to the shot I have of Judah over here where he is actually crisp even though it's showing motion in the shot. I think this is a very similar one where uh, Rosie's face is actually crisp here, but you can see the motion, uh, like the background kind of blurring by. So then you've got Christian here in a very similar situation. Uh, we're shooting in an 80th of a second, and the background um, is kind of blurry. You can see that motion blur happening there, but he himself is, is crisp because I was panning with him. So in a nutshell, it's gonna be really hard to get shots like this. Um, you have to pan with them perfectly. You have to follow them um, and kind of move with them. But your safe bet is to shoot uh, at like a thousandth of a second or more to get those crisp shots um, of the kids, you know, going down the slide and all that stuff. Hope you enjoyed that lesson of me trying to capture, wrangle my kids and capture crisp shots of them playing. In the next lesson, we're gonna be talking about lenses and how they relate to shutter speed and some limitations that you need to be aware of. I'll see you in the next lesson.